In this video, we are again going to look at the path of the charged particle in a magnetic field. Now, this is part 2, but notice we are now considering a case where V is not perpendicular to B. In a, I mean, we are considering a more general case. What happens if V has any random angle with respect to B? We already considered the perpendicular case last time. So, let's look into it. Here is our magnetic field. Our magnetic field is directed towards the right and it's uniform and everything. And let's consider a charged particle over shear. And that charged particle, let's say is Q, is moving with a velocity V, making an angle theta. The question is, how will this charged particle move? Well, for anything, we need to first figure out what's going to be the direction of the force. That's going to be the first step. All right, so let's think about this. Well, actually, it's quite simple. Because notice velocity is this way and the magnetic field is towards the right and therefore if you were to take a rotation of V cross B, remember force is going to be in the direction of V cross B, it's a positive charge, then that rotation from V to B is this way. Okay, I'm going to use the right hand rule and here it is. The right hand rule tells me that if the rotation is this way, then the magnetic force, the force must be into the screen. All right, so that tells us, so let's get rid of this now. So that tells us that the magnetic force is into the screen. Okay, I don't know how to write that. So, it's, it's. so the question is, what's going to be the, the motion of the charged particle? At first, it's quite reasonable to think that since the force is inside, the center of rotation is inside, you know, somewhere inside over here. This, this point is lying inside. It's in three dimension, you have to somehow imagine. And therefore, the charge is going to end up rotating or circulating this way. And I think that's quite reasonable to think like that. But then, you would be wrong. And allow me to explain why you would be wrong. So here's the center. If that was the direction or that was the path of the charged particle, there are different, different points. The centripetal force should always, you know, Centripetal force would always point towards the center. And notice if that is the case, at some point in time, the centripetal force, like for example, at this moment in time, the centripetal force won't be perpendicular to the magnetic field. Remember the Lorentz force equation? The force is not only supposed to be perpendicular to V, but also perpendicular to B. And if that was the case, that's not possible. And this teaches us something very important about our circular motion. The plane of the circular motion must always be perpendicular to the magnetic field. That means if at all there was some sort of a circular motion, then that plane has to be like this. That's the only way that the plane can exist. The plane has to be perpendicular to the magnetic field. Only then all, all the centripetal forces at every moment in time will be perpendicular to the magnetic field. And therefore, this tells us that this is wrong. Okay, so let's get rid of all that stuff. So our charged particle is not going to rotate that way. If it's not going to rotate in a circular motion that way, well, what's going to happen? Well, to understand what's going to happen, we'll decompose this motion into two parts. Okay, so let's use some color. Let's use pink for that. So one component of this is going to come along the magnetic field. And that component of the velocity is V cos theta. And I'm just going to call it as V parallel. Okay, so this is double lines say that's parallel component. And there's going to be another component of this velocity. And that component is going to be V sin theta. And that's going to be V perpendicular. Now what we are going to do is, instead of assuming that's a single charged particle moving this way with an angle theta, Let's assume that there are two charged particles, one moving along the direction of the field with this speed and one moving perpendicular to the direction of this field. And we'll look at the two motions separately and then we're going to combine the two motions. Is that okay? So let's do that. So let's put a line over here. Let's consider two motions separately. So let's first consider this motion over here. Okay. So let's consider the motion of V perpendicular. Well, this is something we discussed last time. You see, V perpendicular is the velocity component perpendicular to the magnetic field. 
Well, and, and we know what, what's going to happen with that. Well, since the force is acting inwards, well, you know, the force is acting inwards, we already discussed that. That's going to make our charged particle rotate this way. That's exactly what we discussed. So, due to, so let's get rid of that. So, due to the motion of the, due to the perpendicular component, the charged particle is going to end up rotating like this. Okay? It's in a plane perpendicular to the magnetic field. I hope you can visualize that. All right? So, it's going to continuously keep moving like that. Okay, now let's consider the second case, and that is the motion of v, per, v parallel. What's going to happen to this guy? Well, notice this guy is moving parallel to the magnetic field, and if, if a velocity is parallel to the magnetic field, that guy is not going to experience a force at all. So that guy is just going to keep moving forward. So that motion is just this way. So we have now cons we have decomposed the motion into two components. One motion is going to be this way, it's going to be, per it's going to be a circular motion pa perpendicular, the plane is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And the second motion is just going to be parallel to the magnetic field. But remember, these are not two charged particles, but they are one single charged particle. So we need to combine the two motion, all right? So let's now write down what's the total motion of the charged particle. So what's the total motion going to look like? Well, total motion is going to be this plus this together and I want you to visualize this and this is this is interesting imagine you have a charged particle that's going in a circle and at the same time it's going forward what what do you think that composite motion is going to look like well let's draw that so I'm going to draw the composite motion in white all right so let's do that over here okay I'm going to draw that over here okay so the composite motion is going to look like this it wants to go in a circular motion so you're going to go in a circle but it also wants to keep going forward and therefore it's going to spiral forward. Some sort of a helical motion is what it's going to end up with. Okay? So our charged particle is end up, will end up going in a, hel a helical motion is just like a spring. The plane of the rotation, the plane of the circular motion, I'm sorry, is always going to be perpendicular to the magnetic field and the helical motion then that's that plane is going to go forward in the direction of the magnetic field that's what you need to understand okay so the magnetic field in this example is actually this so that's very cool so we can use we can take another example suppose we had a magnetic field this way in this direction well how will it end up moving well, what it's going to end up doing is again you consider a perpendicular component and the perpendicular component is going to end up circulating like this and the parallel component is going to keep moving forward and therefore the charged particle is going to go like this. Now that's beautiful, isn't it? That's pretty cool. Okay. So let's understand the characteristics of this circular motion. The radius is going to be very easy because we already worked out that the radius r is just mv divided by qb. But this was when velocity was perpendicular to the magnetic field. Well, all we have to do now is we have to remind ourselves that the radius of the charged particle, the circulation of the charged particle, depends only on the perpendicular component. And the perpendicular component is V sine theta. So all we need to do now is just put V perpendicular. And so we already know the radius. That's V sine theta divided by QB. Ta-da. Done. Okay, second question we can ask ourselves is what is going to be the time period of the circular motion? And the time period is going to remain the same. The time it takes to complete one circle is independent of the velocity. So that's just going to be 2 pi r by v and that's going to be 2 pi m divided by qb. So that's not going to change at all. So that's going to remain the same. So the second one was the time period. All right, now the third one, we're going to introduce a new one and that's called as the pitch. What is the pitch you ask? Well, pitch is this distance. That is what we call as pitch. Alright, so here is point A. Imagine the charged particle is right over here. And the distance from A to B over here is what we need to calculate. That's our pitch. Okay. To calculate the pitch, first thing is I need to know how much time it takes to go from A to B. Well, notice that as far as the circular motion is concerned, from A to B, you complete one full circle. Right? You understand that? It has come back to the same position. And therefore, the time it takes to go from A to B is just the time period. That's just the time period. T is the same time period over here. Alright, the second question is going to be, 
how much is the velocity because if you get the velocity we can get the distance well the velocity from a to b that velocity is the parallel component of the velocity here it is the parallel component this is the velocity and therefore we know the speed the speed from a to b or along a from a to b from here so like along that direction it's not from a it's along a to b direction along the direction of the magnetic field that's just v cos theta that's v parallel and so we can calculate pitch now by using distance formula the distance traveled so pitch is the distance traveled and that has to be equal to speed multiplied by time right so speed is v cos theta multiplied by time and the time period is just this guy that's going to be 2 pi m divided by q b and so there we have it the expression for the pitch is very simple it's going to be 2 pi m divided by q b times v cos theta and none of this formula you should remember i mean all of this can be intuitively derived if you understand your basic kinematics and laws of motion and newton's laws and everything like that all right so one last thing let's talk about is how how does the pitch and the radius and the time period will be affected if we change our angle theta so i want you to think about this okay let's go back over here what do you think is going to happen if I increase the value of theta? Well, notice if theta increases, then this vertical component is going to start growing and the horizontal component is going to start shrinking. You know? Horizontal component is going to become smaller. And therefore, as theta increases, you would expect, sorry, as theta increases, you would expect, so let's imagine that theta continuously keeps increasing. So you would expect the, the circular motion to have bigger and bigger radius. And you would expect the pitch to go down. All right, so this is what happens as theta increases. What happens when theta is 90 degrees? Well, when theta is 90 degrees, notice pitch is equal to zero. That makes a lot of sense because cos 90 is zero and this, the motion is just going to be circular. Hey, that's exactly what we studied last time. And what happens if theta decreases? Well, if theta decreases, then the vertical component is going to decrease and therefore you will see the charged particle will end up moving like this. And in the limiting case, when theta is about to become zero, the pitch is going to be maximum. Can you see that? Because cos zero is one. And so the pitch is, the, com the concept of pitch doesn't even make any sense because if theta is zero, there's not going to be any circular motion. The charged particle is going to go straight. It's going to go in the direction of the magnetic field, no force, and the whole thing is going to go straight. So I hope that makes intuitive sense to you as what happens when theta increases and theta decreases. So this was the motion of the charged particle. It's a three-dimensional motion. It's a little bit complicated when the charged particle is moving with the velocity and the velocity is not perpendicular to the magnetic field. See you next time.